faithfully perform the duties of a member of the House of Representatives throughout the term to which you have been elected and appointed. Please answer, I do. I do. Do you wish for me to proceed to the oath for the Speaker of the House, or will that also be separately announced? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, Annabelle Melton of the Walla Walla Valley delegation has been elected Speaker of the House by the delegates of the YMCA Youth Legislature of the State of Washington. Will Speaker of the House elect Melton unmute for the oath of office? Thank you. Will you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Annabelle Melton, do solemnly swear. I, Annabelle Melton, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Washington. The Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws of the Washington YMCA Youth Legislature. Of the Washington YMCA Youth Legislature. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of the Washington YMCA Speaker of the House. Of the Washington YMCA Speaker of the House. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. The gavel is yours. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I'd just like to welcome everyone here. I'm so excited to see everyone again. I know these last two years have been so crazy. You've probably heard that a lot. Um, but I think one of those, it's one of those things where it's, it's said a lot because it's true. Um, I would like to read a quote from Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. You've all made it a habit to come to YAG. Go to your district meetings, show up, be there, participate. Even now, it's harder. Um, sorry. Uh, it's a lot harder now than it would be a couple years ago when we could all be in person all the time, see each other's smiling faces and debate, uh, but it's not the same. I, I do hope to make this session as the best session it can be for what it is. I hope that you can help me with doing that. Um, thank you. There will be no further business before the House. The House will be at ease until the arrival of the members of the Senate.
I'm going to give it a minute to make sure that everyone is here and joined, but just a reminder to please keep your cameras on, but stay muted. The house will be in order. Please make sure you are muted and in speaker view. Please join me in welcoming all who have gathered with us virtually for opening joint session. Can't really clap right now, but. Uh, yeah, Madam Speaker, the Senators, the Sherberg Senators, the Lieutenant Governor, Tara Pilch Bisson, and the President Pro Tem, Shobin Logani, are present for the joint session. Welcome, Senators, Madam Lieutenant Governor, and Mr. President Pro Tem. At this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce Lieutenant Governor Tara Pitch Pilch Bisson of the Sonomich the Sonomish County Delegation who will preside over opening joint session. Please give your full attention while the invocation is offered by the Chief Clerk of the House, Aidan Hartman. Do or do not, there is no try. Yoda. Thank you, Aiden. The chamber will be at ease while we await our other honored guests. Jack, seeing that the House Sergeant at Arms has not continued with the script, you may continue reading the House Sergeant at Arms lines. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Wait, I, I think I might have the wrong script up. We're at the opening joint session script. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, it's the right script, sorry. Uh, Madam President, the Attorney General-elect Mac Faust and the Secretary of State-elect Leo Osterman are present for the opening joint session. 
Please join me in welcoming Attorney General-Elect Mac Faust and Secretary of the State-Elect Leo Osterman to the opening joint session. It is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Chief Justice Gonzalez to administer the oath of office Mac, Mac Faust of the Franklin Pierce, Franklin Pierce High School delegation has been elected Attorney General by the delegates of the YMCA Youth Legislature of the State of Washington. Will Attorney General-Elect Faust unmute for the oath of office? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today to administer these oaths. Will you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Mac Faust, do solemnly swear. I, Mac Faust, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Washington. The Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution and Laws. And the Constitution and Laws. Of the Washington YMCA Youth Legislature. And the Constitution of Laws of the Washington YMCA Youth Legislature. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of the Washington YMCA Attorney General of the Washington YMCA Attorney General. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Leo Osterman of the Walla Walla Valley Delegation has been elected Secretary of State by the delegates of the YMCA Youth Legislature of the State of Washington. Will Secretary of State elect Osterman unmute for the oath of office? Thank you. Uh, welcome. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Leo Osterman, do solemnly swear. I, Leo Osterman, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Washington. The Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution and Laws. And the Constitution and Laws of the Washington YMCA Youth Legislature. Of the Washington YMCA Youth Legislature. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of the Washington YMCA Secretary of State. Of the Washington YMCA Secretary of State. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Madam President, the Honorable Governor-Elect of the YMCA Youth Legislature, Angelo Cialetti, is present for the opening joint session. Delegates, please join me in welcoming Governor-Elect Angelo Cialetti to the opening joint session. Angelo Cialetti of the Tacoma delegation has been elected governor by the delegates of the YMCA Youth Legislature of the state of Washington. Will Governor-Elect Cialetti unmute for the oath of office? Welcome. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Angelo Cialetti, do solemnly swear. I, Angelo Cialetti, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Washington. The Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of the Washington YMCA youth legislature of the washington ymca youth legislature and that i will faithfully perform and that i will faithfully perform the duties of the office the duties of the office of the washington ymca governor of the washington ymca governor to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations thank you Thank you to Chief Justice Gonzalez for administering our oaths of office. You're welcome. Madam President, honored guest Pam Curtis is present for the opening joint session. Delegates, please join me in welcoming Pam Curtis, former youth governor and former president of the YMCA Youth and Government Board of Directors for the presentation of the Robert F. Utter Award 
We are also privileged to have Betty Utter with us today. Welcome, Mrs. Utter. This award honors those who show consistent, outstanding, and sustained contributions to the cause of civic leadership in Washington State. Established in 1997, the award honors Justice Robert Utter and the principles of ethical leadership, commitment to the ideals of democracy, civic responsibility, and community service. Award recipients demonstrate positive values and service-oriented leadership, are role models for youth, and work to enhance the true mission of democratic governance. Good afternoon, everyone. I also, um, before I get started, want to note that you have a reaction button on this Zoom. And as I get ready to present the award to our honoree today, I would invite you uh, to use your reaction button um, for a round of applause. So here we go. So my name is Pam Curtis. And today I have the sincere honor of presenting the Robert F. Utter Award to Lucy Helm. I also wanna give a special note of greeting uh, to Betty Utter as well. I wish this were in person, Betty, so that we could give you a hug and thank you for your support of this program in person as well. As you heard from Lieutenant Governor Pilch Bisson, the Utter Award was established by the Youth and Government Program 24 years ago. And it's awarded each year to individuals who like the award's namesake, show consistent, outstanding, and sustained contributions to the cause of civic leadership in Washington. This year's recipient, Lucy Helm, is uniquely qualified and embodies the values of the man in whose, this, in whose honor this award was created. Like Justice Sutter, Lucy is an alum of youth and government. I first got to know Lucy when we served together on the board of directors for, this youth and, for the Washington Youth and Government Program. Lucy later went on to become its chair. From the first meeting, Lucy was a powerful force in spreading the reach of this program. She sought to play a role in tolerance, equality, and fairness. And in return, she brought out the best in those of us who worked with her. She inspired initiative, innovation, dedication, and fun. And I always look forward to the next board meeting when I could see Lucy. Like Justice Sutter, Lucy Helm is also an attorney. She started in advocacy for accessible living. She was a trial attorney and then moved to Starbucks where her leadership was recognized as she became litigation director, general counsel, executive vice president, and most recently chief partner officer before her retirement in the fall. Like Justice Sutter, Lucy is a humble, warm, down to earth and effective leader. She's a leader who listens and like Justice Sutter, She's taken that trait into her considerable volunteer work around the state and around the country. To name just a few of Lucy's considerable volunteer efforts, the Legal Foundation of Washington, which distributes money to nonprofit organizations that provide civil legal aid for low-income people, the Campaign for Equal Justice and the Endowment for Equal Justice, nonprofits that provide housing and other services for people with disabilities, the Campaign for Fair Sentencing of Youth, Disability Rights Advocates, Mercy Corps, the Global Humanitarian Organization, and of course, our beloved Youth in Government Program. On a personal note, Lucy was raised in a Catholic family in Kentucky, and I recently was able to hear Pope Francis speak about the role of civil society, and he said something that remind me, reminds me of Lucy. He said, a way has to be found to enable everyone to benefit from the fruits of the earth and not simply to close the gap between the affluent and those who must be satisfied with the crumbs falling from the table. But above all, to satisfy the demands of justice, fairness, and respect for every human being. Lucy Helm closes the gap. She knows how to demand and achieve fairness and justice. And like Justice Sutter, for whom this award is named and who we honor every time we give it, Lucy Helm respects every human being. Bob Utter was my mentor and my hero, and I could not be more thrilled to present the Robert F. Utter Award for Civic Engagement and Leadership to another mentor and hero, Lucy Lee Helm. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, Pam. 
Um, it is such an honor to receive this award um, with introductions from you um, as a mentor and friend who taught me how to do the board chair role, who was such a close confidant of Bob Utter. Um, and I want to thank Betty Utter for joining us today. It is certainly my honor to have you um, and thank you for all that you've done for this program. Um, and thank you, uh, Madam Lieutenant Governor and all of the officers here today. I'm gonna to speak a little bit at the end about your role and your job and how proud I am of all of you. Um, but first, I just wanna tell you why this um, award means something to me. Um, there's three real reasons. One is I'm a proud alumni of youth and government, just like you. Um, I did not participate in Washington. I didn't have the benefit of living here then, but I participated in a great youth and government program in the state of Kentucky. And I learned skills like advocacy, collegiality, respect, and responsibility. Um, and it's not an ex exaggeration to say that this program changed my life for the better. It made me a more critical thinker. It made me more engaged in um, civic uh, responsibilities and to understand the government. And it also brought some of my closest friends. You guys might be interested to know that just this summer, we had a Zoom call with about 20 of my closest friends from, and it, it dates me, 40 years ago in youth and government in Kentucky, um, all of us who shared bill books and our campaign materials and reminiscences of our time in youth and government and talked about how important it was um, to us growing up, to our careers, to our engagement, and to every part of who we are as human beings. Um, the second thing is I'm just so proud of this Washington program. It is an extraordinary program um, that stands out from all of the other states. Um, it's almost 75 years old and it has great alumni, great participation and tremendous support by our elected officials from our governor, from Chief Gus Justice Gonzalez, have you seen, um, to all um, kinds of administrators and staff from our, our Washington institutions, from great alumni. Um, and from so many around the world, around the, the state, as well as a tremendous board of directors. It, been, it was my honor to sit on the board of directors for 20 years, um, where I met such great people who were committed and passionate about this program and opportunities and potential of young people. And third, my appreciation from this war, uh, this, for this award has to be to be my name forever associated with Justice Robert Utter. Like Pam, um, Justice Sutter was um, a mentor of mine, and not because I knew him very well before youth and government. I moved to the state prior to his uh, time on the, on the bench, um, but he was a well-known hero to many even when I moved here. But we were lucky and fortunate enough to have his uh, voice in youth and government up until um, the, the, the near the end of his life. Justice Utter was so proud of this award and um, that, uh, that we named an award after him because I'll have to tell you, when I joined the board, Justice Utter wasn't even on the board, but he was heavily engaged. Um, he gave us encouragement, wisdom, and a few ideas on how we could do our jobs better. Um, he was always so proud. Um, one of my uh, friends and former board members and colleagues, Justice uh, Judge William Downing, who many of you know as an advocate of our, our mock trial program, said this about Justice Utter. Um, as a proud graduate of the YMCA Youth and Government Program, Justice Utter's firsthand awareness and experiences of its values made him a passionate advocate driving the, uh, the force of spreading its reach around the state. And that's the experience that we had with Justice Utter. Personally, he was such a kind, humble, courageous, and brave leader, and he gave himself to everyone that he met. One of my, the treasures of my life was uh, participating with him in giving this award. He would attend this award ceremony um, for the opening ceremony of the Youth Ledge. I really think he wanted just to attend the opening ceremony because he loved this program so much. But he would always come and honor those who were given this award in his name. And um, for about six years when I was board chair, I would have the um, opportunity one-on-one -on -one with him prior to the award being given so that we could talk a little bit about who was receiving the award, the shape of the program, and I could learn about his, his leadership and advocacy around the world in the cause for justice. We in the state of uh, Washington had a true gift in him and he will go down in history um, as a legacy of one of the finest leaders we will ever have in the state. Um, so to, to put it mildly, the gift that I have to be a, associated with his, his name by receiving this award um, is a tremendous honor for me and I'm very humbled by it. 
Um, I'm so proud that we created the award. And I have to just say to all of you that are going to be participating um, starting today in this, that I'm so grateful for all the student participants. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but this program is the greatest young per person's program um, that I think you can participate in. You chose wisely by being part of it. And I think it's more important than ever um, that youth in government is around. First of all, we've been isolated in a pandemic and we haven't had much chance to come together as a community to think about um, what our responsibilities are to the world around us. But secondly, we live in a very fractured world right now. There's very little civility. There's very little trust in our government institutions um, and we need to be together. And there's big problems to solve, racial equity, um, joblessness, immigration, um, the voting suppression. There are so many things and none of that work can be done by one person alone. It has to be done by all of us together. And Youth in Government is a program that gives that to you. It gives you confidence, a voice, um, and the ability to become a civic leader that you're meant to be, um, not just while you're in high school, not just while you're in college, but all throughout your adult life. And I think you will remember this program forever. So I want to thank the students um, and all of you who, are, who have committed to this program. There's a lot of choices you have about how you use your time. And you chose this one. Um, there are so many things that you can learn. And there are so many things that you should do. Um, I hope that you gain more confidence to share your ideas, to respect people with differences and in opinions than yours, to advocate on your own behalf, to think critically, to navigate, to learn about our government, to engage in your community, to always use your right to vote, and to make your views heard every day of your life. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy that you're part of this program, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much for this award. Thank you to everyone in youth and government that honors me. Um, I am so humbled to be part of this um, organization and to be able to continue to be supportive of it. And as I will for the for my lifetime. Thank you and good luck in the rest of this uh, General Assembly. Thank you so much for, to Pam for presenting the award and congratulations to Lucy and thank you for your kind words and your contributions to the program. And also thank you to Mrs. Utter for being here uh, at our opening joint session. Madam um, President, the Honorable Jay Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington has arrived to address the opening joint session. Delegates, please join me in welcoming a strong supporter of the YMCA Youth Legislature, the Governor of the State of Washington, Jay Inslee. Governor, Governor Inslee, it is an honor to have you with us today. Well, thank you. This is really uh, fun for me and exciting to see a group of leaders ready to take our state forward. The fact that you're engaged in this means that you care about our state and you have uh, optimism about the future. And with those two things, the sky's the limit. Before I, I've been asked to make a few comments. Before I do so, I want to make a comment about Justice Utter, who was a hero of mine. And I think his career is instructive to all of us. Um, who were involved in this program, uh, he was a hero of mine because he was of undying principle in so many different ways. And uh, his lessons of his career are interesting because it shows that uh, persistence can ultimately uh, move a state forward. As you know, he was a very, very vigorous opponent of the death penalty and did everything he could to end it in the state of Washington. It actually did not end while he was on the bench, but it essentially has now. And I, as a, as a governor, uh, essentially have put a moratorium to stop the death penalty. And the reason I mention that is that I think his, his career is instructive that it takes a long time, some time to make progress. But if you present a vision to people and you are persistent in your vision, it can come to pass. And, uh, we are, we are very uh, indebted to his leadership, to our state that is coming to pass now. But let me, let me turn to what I've been asked to address. Folks uh, asked me to kind of talk about a couple things today. One, how I got involved in public service. Uh, two, what uh, lesson I've learned that you might use in, uh, if you decide to, to be in public service. 
and then maybe talk about the, the thing that I think will challenge your generation um, as the largest of your opportunities and challenges during your life, starting how I got involved. Uh, I got involved, I was uh, a young uh, father and lawyer over in Eastern Washington and SELA in the mid 1980s. I had never thought about being in elected office. I was interested in public things, but had never thought about it. And uh, Trudy and I, my wife, uh, we got involved in passing a school bond that had failed uh, six times. And we wanted, we thought it was very important to build another high school because they were gonna have to start double shifting this high school because of the crowding. But no one really wanted to try for a seventh try, but Trudy and I were kind of naive and new to politics. And we and another couple got together and said, well, let's give it the old college try again. We passed it on the seventh try, and we were very happy about that. It was joyous. It was our first great victory in public life. But shortly after we did so, the legislature cut the funding formula that the state would provide our local community to build this high school almost in half, and that made us angrier and heck, and we decided to do something about it. I went over and started to raise holy heck with the legislators to stop this outrage, but eventually figured, look, if I was really going to do something about it, I, I should go to the legislature. So I ran for the legislature. Uh, I was very much uh, an upset when we won because I was in a very Republican district. I'm a Democrat. But we won, and I've been working on school issues ever since. And we got that high school built, still there, great teaching going on there in Sela High School. And now, uh, as governor, I've been able to preside over a state that's made its biggest investments of billions of dollars in our public school system and now has created the best financial aid package, which might be important in your lives for those who you want to go to higher education, the best financial aid package in the United States. So my entry into public life was a bit accidental, and I, you might find yourself in that situation as well. And it also has been consistent throughout my career of, of supporting public education in, in many different ways, including working with school districts to get schools reopened now in the COVID pandemic. I'm very, very excited that our schools are now reopened, um, even in hybrid models, to get students back into school. I hope that you're having a good experience in, in your lives. So that's how I got involved in public life. And I have found it a great joy and blessing to have an opportunity to help my community. And we have been able to do it. Uh, certainly in the last session of legislature, we've had one of the most dynamic, uh, productive uh, legislative sessions in my 25 years in public life. We've, we've passed some really good police accountability laws to try to reduce violence that citizens might have. We've significantly uh, made our tax system fair. We've heretofore had a very unfair tax system. And I signed a bill yesterday to make it fair so that not all the burden falls on working people, that some of the wealthier amongst us can chip in and at the simultaneously help some of the poorest amongst us uh, financially. Certainly, uh, we made big steps for equity yesterday. Uh, we made good steps in mental health uh, this session. And uh, uh, I'm just really proud to, to be a governor who's been able to help work with legislators to make big steps. But turning to the second issue that people have asked me to address, what have I learned? If you ever want to go into public life, um, I will tell you that what I've learned is th that the most powerful skill set that a person in public life may have is the ability to be a good listener. And uh, that may surprise you, uh, but I have learned if you're gonna be effective in this job, being able to really understand the person you're listening to, what their views are, or what their needs are, or what's going on in their life. And those who have succeeded in public life are the best listeners. I, I know Nancy Pelosi has been a very successful speaker of the house. I served her with her when I was in U.S. Congress. I served in U.S. Congress for about 16 years, representing first Central Washington and then uh, in Western Washington before I became governor. And Nancy always said that that's the secret of her speakership because she can listen to members 
and really understand what their motivations are and what their issues are and how she can advance their issues and finding some common ground, which is really the secret of governance is to find common ground where all parties can make some advance. So uh, if I was going to list one thing, that's the thing I would list. Now, the other thing I would list is the power of perseverance. We talked a little bit about that, about Justice Sutter. Uh, to do things in a democracy takes a lot of time. You just got to persevere and eventually you win. There's some things this year in our legislative that things I've been working on for nine years. And I signed bills yesterday that I've been working on for almost a decade, uh, including some climate change measures. So uh, never giving up certainly is uh, one of the most important lessons. Uh, the third thing I've been asked to address is to address what you might find the most important during your time in public life. And there's a lot of things I know that are of interest to you. Uh, equity, uh, making our, our society more equitable to end some of the racism that has uh, bedeviled us through the decades. Uh, improving educational opportunities in many different ways. Uh, uh, you know, giving yourselves better job prospects. Uh, looking for ways to advance more diversity in our society. I know there are many things that you will be interested in, but I want to say that there is one all-encompassing existential issue that I think you will need to deal with during your time in public life, and that is the threat of climate change, which threatens the very basis of our state and basically how we live in our civilization. And I think that during your time in life, this will be the overriding challenge because we know that it will seriously damage your ability to live and enjoy Washington State the way I have lived in Washington State. I've enjoyed salmon, I've enjoyed glaciers, I've enjoyed clean water, I've enjoyed forests that don't burn on, down all the time. I've enjoyed apple orchards and vineyards that have enough irrigation water. I've enjoyed clean air so that you can breathe the air and not be breathing toxicity. All of those things will change in dramatic ways unless we arrest these forces of climate change. You know that because you're the most scientifically literate generation in state history. So those issues are well, de uh, are well decided. But how we transition to a clean energy economy so we're not polluting the skies with toxicity causing asthma on our kids and increasing temperature and aridity causing forest fires. That's going to be the big challenge that you face during your time as you're in the future decades. We have started a process on that. Our legislature passed bills this year, two bills, to put a cap on carbon pollution and have polluters pay, and also a bill to give clean, clean fuels, a clean fuel standard, so consumers have cleaner fuels. But these are just the very basis of a start of this effort. And you'll be called upon to use your creative powers, scientifically, business, and in policy on this. And I hope you will become active in this effort because we need your leadership. Uh, you are poised to provide that leadership because you are so well-educated and you care so much about your communities. So I hope in all of the things you care about, you'll put part of your, your energies and to help uh, save us from the ravages of climate change. I'm confident we can tame this beast, but we need you to do that. My closing comment to you is that a lot of times when we youth groups ask people in public life to address them, the subject is, you know, what you'll do when, when you're in elected office. My closing comment will be, don't wait to be in elected office. You're a leader right now. You can lead right now. You can leave in school bond issues. You can lead in your school in its own administration. You can lead, make your food banks more effective. Um, you can lead very importantly today and try to find somebody in your family who hasn't been vaccinated and urge them to take care of themselves and get vaccinated. That's a leadership thing. Probably it's the most important thing anything any of us can do today because we know the only way to really get through this pandemic is to get enough people vaccinated so that we break the backs of this virus. I hope you'll use your leadership capability on that 
in the days to come with your loved ones, your uncles, your aunts, your neighbors, your employer, your teacher. Urge them to get vaccinated. That's a leadership thing. And boy, I'll tell you, you get somebody to get vaccinated, you save a life. You don't have to be a governor or a president to save a life. You can do it right now. So I hope that you'll join this leadership effort. With that, I want to thank you for what you're doing, what you're going to do for our state. And uh, I want to thank you for giving me a chance to say hello. I hope to shake your hands or rub elbows with you personally someday. I, I, I hope we'll have an opportunity. When I do meet you, remind me that we've met uh, on this call and we'll enjoy what we've learned together. With that, do good, be well, go Mariners, go Rainiers. Be healthy, everybody. Go why? See you later. Thank you so much, Hello. Governor Inslee. We are so Thank honored you. to have you here with our opening joint session. Um, so it was, it was such an honor to hear from you and to have your support in this program every year. We'll see we you again. Have... Take care. We will now hear from Angelo Chiletti, YMCA Youth Governor for the 74th Youth Legislature. All right, thank you, Tara. Um, hey, hey, party people. Um, three years ago, I promised my advisor, Don Brevik, that I would start opening session as governor with that. And as you can see, Don, I kept my promise. Before I get into what I have to say, I just want to start out by acknowledging that the land I currently live on is the traditional home of the Puyallup tribe. Without them, I would not have any of the opportunities where I live. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land who are still here. And I encourage all of you, if you haven't already, to look into what native land you currently reside on as well. Um, one of my cabinet members will post a link in the governor's announcements channel on Discord that I encourage you all to go to if you want to learn more. This past year has presented its fair share of challenges. We bore witness to the first attack on the American Capitol since 1814. We came face to face with police brutality and systematic uh, racial oppression against Black Americans, demonstrated by the horrific m murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and countless others. We lost political icons from congressman and civil rights leader uh, John Lewis to Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. With COVID-19 taking the lives of nearly 600,000 Americans, a historic and falsely contested presidential election, nationwide protests for racial equality, and the ever-looming threat of global warming, the people of the United States are facing new and difficult questions every day. Yet through all this, we see perseverance, we see hope, and we see change. The political divide in our country is starting to wane, with the continued high approval rating of the Biden administration potentially ushering in a new era of bipartisan political possibilities. Across the country, we're finally taking the first step on the path towards a truly equitable criminal justice system. We're finally holding murderers accountable, white Americans are coming to terms with our privileges, and those in power are starting to listen to the cries of tens of millions of America disenfranchised because of the color of their skin. All the while, new innovation promises to push society ever forward as scientists and public servants alike work tirelessly towards a full vaccine rollout. The people of the United States are fighting for their futures and for the future of their country, and they're doing it together. As Washingtonians, we have a special place in this fight. Washington has always been on the front lines of change. We elected the first female mayor of any major US city in 1926, hosted the first general strike in America in 1919, and most importantly, created the first cat meme in 2007. If anyone can lead the way to a brighter future, it's us. As the flaws in the American system become more and more apparent, it's time for us to step up. The disconnect between real everyday Americans and some of our elected officials has had held many necessary changes back. Our elected officials have a hard enough job as it is trying to decide what's best for the nation. And on top of that, many of them have to spend half their day raising money for the next term, leaving even less time for making the tough decisions that we need them to make precisely and earnestly. Because of these limitations, the people of the United States have been the driving force for the change that we've seen over the past year. It took a year of nationwide protests 
to hold an officer accountable for a murder he committed on camera. It has been, never been more apparent to me that we all have work to do, but also seeing all your eager faces, knowing that each and every one of you is dedicated to pushing our country forward, I know we are up to the challenge. The way change comes about is through dedicated groups of people who care about something. And if you care about this country and I care about this country, then why not us? That is why you are all here, not to drag about the processes of our democracy in pursuit of, in pursuit of partisan ends, not to drive down change that scares you, but to educate yourself and others about changes that must be made and to enact them into law. There is a way where you will hone your skills and gain a real understanding of what our democracy should be. Awareness is important, but it is no substitute for actually learning. Learning is not a passing thought, but an action done to better oneself and one's understanding of the subject. Democracy must be learned by each generation, it means that we not just read about laws and procedure, but partake in the actual process and familiarize ourselves with it. We do this not for our sake, but for the future of our state and those who call it home. A question I often have at the top of my mind is, how can I make an impact? I hope this conference allows each and every one of you to answer this question. What you are going to do, what are you going to do when the session ends? Right now, though, we're all taking the first step. We're educating ourselves, and more importantly, we're educating each other. That is how exactly how democracy will be learned by our generation. As youth governor, I hope to see all my fellow delegates doing exactly that putting in effort, educating ourselves, and fighting for what you truly believe in. I know the governor's office will be a strong advocate of science, equality, justice, and breaking down barriers for the average American, because these are the values I hold. These are the issues I care about. So I'm asking you all right now, what do you care about? And more importantly, what are you going to do about it? The youth governor is often seen as being above the rest of the delegates, but I want to change that narrative. I am your equal. All of us are here to be servants of the will to the people, to the will of the people, made to help Washington and the United States of America be the best they can be. So do not be intimidated or concerned to reach out, ask questions, or raise concerns to any members of my cabinet or myself. Um, I am extremely excited to see all the fruits of your labor pay off. This is going to be a great couple days and my cabinet and I will do the best po job possible to make sure session runs as smoothly as it can. This will be a time of growth and learning for all of you. And I encourage you all to really put yourselves out there. Again, I cannot wait to serve as your youth governor this year. Let's have a great session, y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Chaletti. Thank you to our honored guests and supporters for being here this afternoon. Does the chief clerk have any announcements? Uh, yes, I do. I have a few announcements. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so just a reminder to please use named conventions, both in Discord and on your Zoom calls. Those naming conventions are, I believe, both listed in the Zoom chat uh, here and in the um, on the Discord server. Uh, on Discord, please disable any statuses that you have turned on in Discord. Uh, this is mostly for those of you uh, who already use Discord. Uh, if you just got a Discord account, uh, for YEG, you probably don't have to worry about this, uh, but make sure you turn off um, any music playing or games and apps that are being used in the background. Uh, just make sure they don't show up on Discord. Uh, yeah, um, from here, we'll be going into committees. Uh, you can find your committee assignments uh, on your schedule uh, or on your bill book. Uh, if you look in your bill book, uh, the first two numbers of your bill uh, refer to the committee that you're in. Uh, it should also be on your schedule, I believe. Um, if you are not assigned to a committee, uh, please go to the, uh, yeah, committee with your bill. Um, and it should be there. Um, I believe that is all of the announcements that I have. Thank you, Claire. There being no further business, the opening joint session of the 74th YMCA Youth Legislature is now adjourned.